big bass are biting on the mighty Columbia. Yeah, baby! As a top 10 regular tries to use a slim lead to break into the big time. I'm ready for a win. But also in the hunt. This is going to be fun. A rookie pro. A nice smallmouth right there. And a river regular who's ready for his turn in the spotlight. That's what I needed. <laughs> the best in the West face off with a huge payday on the line. He's got yeah! Get ready to crown a champion next. The Columbia River is the crown jewel of Pacific Northwest fisheries. And along with big bass, the best anglers in the West are right here. From Umatilla, Oregon, this is the second event of the 2009 Walmart FLW Series National Guard Western Division. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Harper along with Charlie Evans and welcome to this final day of competition on the Columbia River. Not far from the marina here is a stretch of water that this week has produced some huge stringers of big bass. So much so that it's propelled one of our pros from seventh all the way to the top of the leaderboard. Charlie, let's talk about our day three leader, Idaho pro Neil Russell, who's had a lot of success here on the Columbia River. In fact, the last couple of years he's finished in the top ten. But this time he's put himself in a position to win. Neil's fished real close yesterday to the takeoff area, giving him a long day of fishing. And with that, he was able to find some bedding bass that put him on top of the leaderboard going into the final day. For now, Neil Russell's holding them all at bay, but only by nine ounces. And hot on his heels are Joe Caparuccio, Ronald Holmes Jr., and Ron Mace. All three of those anglers making the long run upriver where they hope to catch some really big fish, but they don't have much fishing time when they get there. On the other hand, Neil Russell staying close, maximizing his fishing time, hoping to stay in the lead. Better to be in first than trying to catch up, though. I'm just going to go out and do what I've been doing, see what happens. I feel better about things at this point than each day of the tournament. Each day I've kind of learned a little more about my water, and it seems to be restocking a little bit. If that happens, I'll be in good shape, and if not, I'll just grind away and take what I can get. There's a little nervousness, but I feel pretty confident. It feels great. I love fishing against a good competition. It helps you perform better, and it's already been a lot of fun and just amazing that I've gotten this far. I'm running about 100 miles, so you get a lot of time to just reflect and think about what you're doing. I mean, you've got every cast already planned by the time you get there, because there's just nothing to do and you're thinking, by the time we get there, yeah, and hopefully things execute like they're supposed to, and I get five big ones and I'm headed back. I'm gonna run 70 miles up the river. It's called the Ramp Hanford Reach area. Um, the wind today is supposed to be, it's forecasted for three miles per hour. Should make for a pretty smooth ride, except for about five miles where the current rolls up. It uh, might be a little bit bumpy, but after that, as soon as we get into that smooth water, it's just a nice, clean, calm run all the way up the river. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be very exciting. I just want to go catch some big fish. But that long run upriver is a gamble, and the wind is a major factor. If it picks up, then you could really have a tough time making it back down river and through the locks in time for the check-in. Charlie, don't forget, last year on the Columbia River, the wind picked up on that final day. We had eight-foot whitecaps. This river flows 1,200 miles from its source in British Columbia to where it reaches the ocean along the Washington-Oregon border. Anglers take off from the Umatilla Marina. Ron Hobbs Jr. is running upriver, and that means locking through at McNary Dam. All right, we're just stopping here to kill some time before we got to get through the locks at 7 o'clock this morning. So we'll stop here, make a couple casts, hopefully catch a keeper fish or two. First hour when you're waiting for the locks, I just uh, went around and covered some ground next to the lock with a spinner bait before I would lock through. With smallmouth, they slash a bait so much, you got to use, you got to put a trailer hook on your spinner baits. Just like that, because they'll just come up and, and slam it. They're not, they don't come up and engulf your bait. They come up and slap at it. You have to have a trailer hook. That's missed a couple others even with that trailer hook back there. There's one. Got one. Fish on. Feels like a pretty good one. 
Definitely a good one. Coming around the boat here. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. It's about a two pounder right there. Choked on the spinner bait. Look at that. Good thing I had a trailer hook, right? Always use a trailer hook when you're fishing for smallmouth. <laughs> he hit it hard, but he wasn't committing to it at all. That's number one, right there. A nice bonus fish for Ron Hobbs. Let's get over to Neil Russell, who's using the opposite strategy. He's actually staying downriver at a sweet spot he's been working all week. Seems to be a little more current this morning than yesterday morning. That might help the bite. This is kind of the lower end. The rocks on the roadbed kind of end right down through here. So start at the bottom, throw the bait up current so it's coming down with the current. The bass should be facing up current. That'll be a more natural presentation. After coming close two times before here on the Columbia River, Neil's ready to win this thing. We caught up with him last night as he prepped his gear for the final day and talked things over with some fishing buddies. I feel better about tomorrow than the last three days. Oh, good. Great. Figuring them out a little bit more. As well as the Western Series. Thanks, buddy. I've been getting my butt kicked on the tour by the, the big boys, the big tour boys, but I can compete with them. I just got to pay my dues. Yeah, it feels good to come home and know I can still, <laughs> still, catch still do it. Still catch yeah. Yeah. A little tiny swim bait. I had one spit up a, a salmon smolt that long. And I think they think this is them little salmon, and it's working really well. I think if it was an inch longer, it probably wouldn't work. The smallmouth love tubes. The Texas rig a tube with the weight out front, they tend to nosedive. When you put that weight inside, it balances them out better, and a tube will spiral as it falls. Winning this event would give me the finances to, to manage through a couple more years and be a full-time fisherman. So that's the goal. His go-to bait, a bluegill-colored, three-and-a-half-inch kamikaze hollow belly swim bait. There we go. Got to start, got to start. Good, solid keeper. You just barely hooked, and they're still not biting that thing very good. They are biting it good enough for Neil to have two keepers in the boat now. There's one. That's a good one. Easy, 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 baby. There we go. Yeah, that's better. They're growing. They're growing. They ate that a lot better. Got that hook down in there a little deeper. Got about half the bait. When they get real active, that bait will just be disappeared into them. That's a nice uh, two pounder, two and a quarter maybe. Neil Russell keeping the pressure on the rest of the competition. Three in the boat now, and some of the other pros haven't even reached their spots yet. Coming up, a young rookie keeps his hot streak alive. And these smallmouth are really, really hard to see sometimes. Oh, like that one right there. Good one. That is so cool while a West Coast gun finally gets on the board. National Guard, I'm on the way. And the long run pays off for a local favorite. Got her. The big bass are biting on the Columbia, so stay with us. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Look at that, girl. FLW Outdoors from the Columbia River is brought to you by Walmart. Save money, live better. National Guard, BP, Beyond Petroleum, Lawrence, the high definition revolution is here. Evinrude E-Tech, with three years, no maintenance, spend more time on the water. And by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. McNary Dam is the dividing line between anglers making the long runs to fish upriver and those who are staying closer to the launch site at Umatilla. 
A talented field of co-anglers and pros have been battling it out for three days already, and what a contest it's been. A huge playing field and challenging conditions greeted the pros on day one. Strong currents, light winds, and fish in different spawning stages gave the anglers many options for their attack. Ronald Hobbs Jr. chose to run 80 miles upriver and the gamble paid off. 17 pounds, 11 ounces, give him a big round of applause. Yeah, I'm running a long ways because the fish where I'm fishing are actually larger. If you get five bites, there are gonna be five good ones. Hobbs had a lead of nearly four pounds, but on day two, the wind came up and he came back to the pack. Dang it. As he fell into a tie with young Joseph Caparucio, the 21-year-old caught his biggest keeper on his last cast of the day, giving Go him on. a two-day total of 25 pounds, 10 ounces. I like the pressure and uh, like fishing against the best. It makes you better too. I Got just him. hope I can keep doing well and uh, win this thing. But the leaderboard was tight, with the top 10 separated by less than four pounds. Dropping water levels added another variable on day three. Some anglers used it to their advantage, including Ranger Pro Neil Russell. He stayed in the lower pool, maximized his fishing time, and jumped from seventh place all the way into first. 14 pounds, 13 ounces, put him at 37 one. Give him a big round of applause. He is our new tournament leader. Columbia River's just been really good to me. Uh, three events here with the Western Series, and I've made top 10 in all three of them. I'm ready for a win. But there are nine other pros with the same idea. So who will make the right choices on the final day? There he is, that's a good one. Joe Caparuccio is just 21. This is only his second event as a pro, but here he is in the top 10. He's having the time of his life, maybe because fishing runs in the family. This is gonna be fun, I can't wait. This is the first year I've fished the FLW National Guard Tour. Uh, this is only my second tournament. It feels great to make the top 10 as such a young angler and with such a good amount of competition here, it's, it's pretty hard. Got him. I grew up fishing in Orange County, just pond hopping, clear water ponds, golf course ponds. My number one lake where I grew up fishing was Lake Mission Viejo, and it's still to this day my favorite lake I've ever been to. My dad was the one that got me into fishing when I was about this big, before I could even walk. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's something I've loved to do through my dad because he's taught me it. I want to hear it, woo! I'm super lucky and super blessed and I have to thank my dad for basically all of it. I'm so <laughs> proud of this yeah. young man. I'd love to uh, fish and compete at the highest level of bass fishing. Thank you, Fish. And I hope to do that in uh, the next few years. I like to cast on a bunch of little spots. Every little spot that uh, that looks like a bed, even these smallmouth are really, really hard to see sometimes. The bottoms, oh, like that one right there. Good one, good one. Oh. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Ah, almost. Ah. This is real finesse fishing. Joe's using six pound Berkeley trialing four carbon line. Throwing a four and a half inch rover worm in oxblood red flake good color. Fish. Ah, these smallmouth fight good. Come on, girl. Yeah. Great way to start the day. There we go. Oh man, that is so cool. That is so sweet. Oh, easy fish. Come on, girl. No way. That is too sweet. That nice smallmouth right there. Beautiful Columbia River smallmouth, first one of the day. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh boy. Beautiful fish. About two pounds. Nice way to start the day. His dad, Dino, has been a pro with FLW Outdoors for over 10 years, and that fish would make Papa proud. Let's get over to Ish Monroe. He began the day on the other end of the leaderboard in 10th place, but you can't ever count him out. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Ah! Last year on the California Delta, his home water, he came roaring from behind to win by a six pound margin. Well, my decision to not lock up was based on the fact is that there's a lot of good fish up there. And I went up there and I practiced for 12 hours. And in that 12 hours, I only caught four. 
they were four of the right ones, but it was only four. And so I figure with only four or five hours of fishing time up there, if I couldn't catch five pretty easily, I wasn't gonna lock and maximize my fishing time and stay down here. Holy jeez, he thumped it. He uses a tube, green pumpkin and gold flake, throwing it on eight pound fluorocarbon line. Is it like a little better? Watch it coming at you. There's a keeper. Finally, there's a keeper. Takes me all day to catch a keeper on the tube, finally. Looks like a little lamprey got to him or something right there, but start number one. We're gonna get the skunk out of the boat here, boys. National Guard, I'm on the way. <laughs> Ish finally has things going his way. He still has a lot of work cut out for him, though. Ish didn't lock up river, but here's a guy who did, Ron Mace. All week long, he's been running a long way up river into Washington State to Hanford Reach. We ran 85 miles today, just because this is the last place they pretty much spawn, I think, on this whole river system. So I can actually get some pre-spawn and post-spawn fish, and they're usually giant. I'm fishing in a bay that's really, you know, five foot deep or so, bed fishing, and I see a little, like a two pounder on a bed. There he is. Got him. Swing and catch that one. I see the big one. She's there on there too. Not the one he's supposed to bite. Oh, I got the little one. That's the big one right there. Look at that bad boy. Oh, please catch that sucker. Need that big girl. Ron's using a three inch sniper snub in green pumpkin color. This is when it gets scary. Come on, she's moving back to the bed. Four pound, four carbon line, so if he hooks her up, he's gotta take his time. Got her. Big fish. Big fish. That's a five. Yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Look at that, girl. That's smallmouth we came up here for. Look at that. That healthy. That's for the National Guard boys down Iraq. I appreciate that. Let me do this. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, heck with that drop shot ride. I'm going to get it. So Ron Mesa's game plan pays off. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and while he's catching them up north, down south, things are just starting to heat up. That ain't a bad one there. Much more ahead from the Columbia River when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the final day of competition at the Walmart FLW Series National Guard Western Division on the Columbia River. Last year, local pro David Crum battled rough water to win this event. He took the lead from Neil Russell on day three and never gave it back, finishing with a four pound margin of victory. So he knows what it takes to reel in a winning sack here on this river. Most of the fish this time of year are gonna be caught from one to four foot of water. Caught it. Even though they're done spawning, they're still up really shallow. Um, one of the main baits here on the Columbia River, all times of the year, is a green pumpkin tube. It just looks like something good to eat to them. There's one. Net. Another great bait around here in the spring and even in the summer and fall is a spinner bait. My favorite is a chartreuse and white with either a white or a chartreuse trailer. I generally go with one gold, one silver blade. You throw them around weed lines, sandbars, rock piles. Got another one. And on days when they're eating spinner baits, it's hard to beat. Right on. You can cover so much water with it, and they'll travel a long ways to eat it. I have two hooks on this because sometimes, especially this time of year, they'll slap at it. You'll feel them hit the blades. And so you put that on there so when they hit the blades, that'll grab them in the jaw. The guy that wins this tournament, I believe, is going to have to fish several different areas. One more! Just no one area, I don't believe, is going to hold up for four days in this tournament. 
Yeah! As we said, David Prom, last year's winner. Here's Ken Wick, second top 10 in a row here on the Columbia River. He's on a solid pattern. That's what I've done the whole tournament. Just sit there and cover these, these spawning flats. These kind of off the, they're off the river channel. You know, two, three, four, 500 yards off the river channel. There's just some secondary troughs in here where these fish are coming to spawn. And they got big rock and sparse grass, real sparse grass. And these fish are just moving in and out. And later in the day, these they load up in here. I don't know where they are this time of day, but later in the day, they just load up in here. You know, I caught four on a grub and a couple on a rattle trap. And they're all small bass. I knew the swim bait bite was going to turn on. They should start getting really aggressive here anytime. Oh yeah. Ken using a variety of baits today, hadn't started throwing the swim bait just yet. Right now he's throwing a green goby sweet beaver by Reaction Innovations. <laughs> that ain't a bad one there. Spawning right on the back side of that thing, right on the back side of that little eddy. Ken's having a great morning. This is his 10th keeper of the day. Of course, you can only keep your five biggest in the live well. Here's Ron Hobbs Jr. He's upriver at Hanford Reach. He led the first two days of this event, and he's looking for his first pro title. You know, you talk to any local and you ask them, where on the river do you think the tournament's going to be won? And every local would agree that it will be won in the area that I'm fishing, the Hanford Reach area. There's one, got one. The whole trick to river fishing is just finding dead spots, dead spots in the current. I'm not talking about like lower river, I'm talking like fast water stuff. Where I'm fishing, it's, it's an eight mile per hour current, oh, easy. Up there, the fish can get bigger and fatter just because they can sit in those dead spots, all the food's brought to them. There's fish. I've been catching most of my fish on this little dilly dally right here. This is, um, it's called a snub. It's absolutely amazing. It's a Northwest special. When you come to Columbia River, you better have a pack of these in your boat. <laughs> Smallmouth just can't can't resist them. Oh, yeah. I think I'm like a pound and a half out of the lead right now. I'm disappointed, to be honest with you. I've, I've been seeing just an absolute ton of fish. I see so many of them and just can't catch them. But I can guarantee you, if I could weigh in the ones I'm seeing, I'd have a great chance of winning, if, if not just walking away with it. Got him. That's a big, big one. Oh, look at that, another big one chasing it. Two big ones chasing it. God, there's two giants down there chasing it. The sniper stub is green pumpkin with copper flake rigged with a 3 16 ounce weight. There we go. There's two big ones down there with it. That's okay. He's just one shy of a limit. He rolled the dice with that long run north, but it looks like it's paying off. So Ron Hobbs Jr. has a good looking stringer so far, and it looks like the bite is turning on, but these are some tricky bass. Smart fish, he knows where the hook is. He got it that time though. Coming up, day three leader Neil Russell lights up his hot spot. There we go, nice. Here's how things stand on the Columbia River. Ron Hobbs Jr. has surged ahead, but the rest of the field is close behind. Ken Wick is just a pound back. Neil Russell has dropped to fourth, less than two pounds out of the lead with three fish in the boat. So he's still in the hunt and he's determined to stick with his game plan. Yeah, I'm just trying to be thorough with the tube because I think the it's late enough in the day they're they're a little bit active, so over in here or wherever, I might catch one that's just hanging out, get it to feed. After the first two bass on that key area, I knew I had plenty of time to leave it alone and come back. Well, I wanted to go from spawning area to feeding area and see if there were maybe a lot of bass feeding to try to cover the bases. No luck. So I headed back to the key area of the roadbed. This time I'm throwing the tube because it's later in the day and I've found that they're willing to eat. There we go. 
All right. And it gives them more time to get to the bait. Yeah. And the swim bait, they may be interested, but it may be gone before they get there. That's a nice little two pounder, a little better maybe. There we go. Nice one. Using a dry creek tube in an old ugly color with 3 16 ounce weight. There we go. Nice. Nice, fat, healthy one. That'll help the cause. Nice, two and a half. That will work. Beat up a little bit. This one's spawned, been spawning a bit. It's got scales beat off it. All right. Just one shy of a limit, but a great catch for Neil Russell. Joe Caparuccio, though, is having a little more trouble hooking up. Smart fish. He knows where the hook is. If you keep, if you see that right there, gets it every time right past the hook, just so I can't get him. Put on another worm, and I'm going to get him this cast. I got a trick. I'll put on a little smaller worm. I'm putting on a little uh, smaller worm, a little bit smaller and curly tail. Um, just to get a little action to try and entice the fish. I was using a straight tail worm before. But now uh, I want to kind of aggravate him a little more and see if I can get a better reaction. And this worm is a little bit smaller because it's not straight tailed. And uh, hopefully that should do the trick. You can see this fish swimming right here in this grass. I just can't get him to eat the whole, the whole worm. He got it that time though. It's a good one. Oh, the net's back there. For four days in a row, he's fished this spot for bedding smallmouth bass. He's in Columbia Point Marina, a harbor just off the main river. Come on, girl. There we go. Sweet, number three. Awesome, yes. It's a little guy, but it'll do the trick, just like I thought that smaller worm. It went up and got it first cast, hooked right inside of the mouth, as you can see, right in the top of the lip. Perfectly hooked. Gonna unhook him. Yeah, it's a keeper. So that's three for Joe Caparuccio. Further up river, Ron Mace is hoping to fill out a limit. So there's a subtle current break that comes right out here, and there's a, a rocky point, and these fish will, will orientate themselves right on the front of this current break and they'll sit right on that edge. You want your bait to actually run right on that edge. Sometimes you can get some giants that are just done spawning or hanging out ready to come up. There's a fish. He needs this one for his limit. He's running close on time. He's got over 85 miles of river to run back, and he has to maneuver through a lot to get to the check-in. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Number five. Thank you. Not big, but it's not spawned either. Little guy, I bet there's more right up there though. So Ron Mays has his five bass limit. Okay, let's get updated on how things stand. Day three leader Neil Russell's been steady all day. There we go, nice. Ron Mace's early five pounder moved him to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's smallmouth we came up here for. And Joe Caparuccio is hanging on with a few good fish. But watch out for Cody King, who's been climbing up the standings all day. More big bass coming up. That's what I needed. <laughs> Over $100,000 and an FLW Series title are on the line for the champion here at the Columbia River. Here's Cody King, who started the day in sixth, and he's really been making a move up the leaderboard. I fished a wide variety of areas today. I really just hopped spots all day long, uh, mostly shallow. My plan was to lock, because I hadn't yet. I'd fished below the dam the first three days. I was gonna fish for a few minutes before I locked, because there's a 20 minute delay, and I actually caught one fish before I locked. That'll work. Woo! Caught him on a spinnerbait waiting for the lock. That was a good way to get it started, had my mindset right after that. And then my plan was to go from the locks straight to try and catch a largemouth upriver, about 25 miles upriver. Being from here, I knew where I needed to go to catch big fish. 
That helps. And I just hit the spots where I've caught fish that were, say, four pounds or bigger in the past. That'll Most of the fish I caught today were actually on a fluke. Caught him on a fluke with a falcon weighted hook. I was targeting largemouth and I flipped up towards a tree and felt a little tick, figured one had just taken it, and I reared back and got him. Came out at the boat right away and went on a little run away from the boat and I was fumbling around with the net and almost didn't get him in the net, but. He ended up in the boat. That's what I needed. <laughs> That's what I was looking for right there, baby. Mitch. Right there. Oh, no. Missed it the first time. Got it the second time. Now we can go back to smallmouth fishing. That nice large mouth gives Cody a five bass limit. Here's Ken Wick hoping to hook up with some big ones himself. Berkeley hollow belly. That's what I've caught. 95% of my bass on all week. Using a four inch hollow belly and Tennessee shad color, his presentation really at about six inches below the surface, really quickly looking for reaction bites. There we go. Yeah. That one just smoked that swim bait. Why I wasn't looking. And this is when it gets good. Baby, come to daddy. <laughs> That's two and a half, two and three quarter. Pretty decent upgrade. Ken is smoking them. That's his 16th keeper of the day. He's got five in the live well, so we pick out his smallest bass there and replace it with this fish. You can only take five to wait. While the pros who fished upriver are making the long drive home, day three leader Neil Russell needs one more bass, and he hopes it's a kicker. Nice. One more. Stay tuned. While the competition may be winding down on the water, the party's just getting started at the Hermiston Walmart. Fans are having a great time in the National Guard fun zone as they wait for the weigh-in to begin. Back out on the water, Ish Monroe's racing against the clock in the hunt for big fish, but so far, he's come up short. Fish are still spawning a little bit, coming off the spawn. Some haven't even spawned yet. I got a 10 pound test mono for the stretch and a graphite rod that has the action and the slow taper of a fiberglass. Allows me to let those fish get it pretty good. High speed, six to one reel. And I'm reeling it pretty fast. I got my Biosonic set on aggressive pattern because the smallmouth are real aggressive right now. When you find them, you get in an area and you just catch them. And the Daiwa game vibe is basically a lipless rattling bait that makes a lot of noise, allows you to cover water fast, and the fish just seem to like it. Fishing it shallow. Yep, there's another one. Oh, a little better. Keeper. Definitely not the ones to win, but hey, five is five. A limit for Ish. Using a chartreuse chrome lipless crankbait. Makes a lot of noise and he's really smoking it through the water looking for a reaction strike. Has to be at least 12 inches long to be a keeper. Oh yeah, over 12. Time to upgrade. Not the big ones he's looking for, but every ounce helps. Meanwhile, Neil Russell's still hunting for a limit. This morning I was getting them to react to that swim bait a little bit, and they, they may still, but since I still need a limit, I don't want to eliminate the you know, 12 inches or anything in that swim bait. A lot of times those ones just kind of wrap at it. 
There's one. Oh yeah, nice one too. I wonder where that one came from. Ha <laughs> Hmm, don't care. There we go, there's five. Nice fresh one there. Nice, nice. Number five, nice little fat fish. Okay. So that fish could seal the deal for Neil. So time's up and the anglers are heading for check-in. This is our third stop for the National Guard on this river. And every year it comes down to, do I stay close and catch all I can or to make big long runs to try to catch bigger fish? Either way, these anglers have brought in huge fish out of the Columbia River. We saw plenty of them come to the scales during the first three days of this event. But only one of them was big enough to earn the title of Folgers Big Bass. And that was a five pound, nine ounce toad brought in by none other than Cody King on day three. He goes home with a nice check from Folgers. Also on day three, we saw the final co-angler weigh in. John Browning was the last co-angler to step up to the stage where he faced off against day two leader, Gary Haraguchi. And when the fish were all weighed in, it was Gary Haraguchi who emerged on top completing a three-day sweep of the co-angler competition. Last year, he finished fourth right here. This time, he took home the trophy. What an unbelievable performance. And a good job by all the co-anglers. John Browning just missed making the top 10 and finished in 11th. Okay, so this day of fishing comes to a close. And it's been a long commute for some pros who had to drive a couple of hours just to make it back to the marina but not Neil Russell, whose plan all along was to stay close to home. And he just might have made the right decision. Overall, it was a good day. Got six keeper bites today. They'll add up to a solid bag. Yeah. I would love to win. It would be full success in the big leagues. He wants to know I did. Good, bad, ah. Here's the Walmart. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna come out here. Just wish me luck. Coming up. After four grueling days of competition, the final 10 pros weigh in one last time. Whose big bass will prove to be the best? We find out when FLW Outdoors continues. FLW Outdoors from the Columbia River is brought to you by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Tums Dual Action, goes to work in seconds, lasts all day or all night. U.S. Bank, where the future looks brighter with us. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. And by Chevy, the official ride of FLW Outdoors. An enthusiastic crowd on hand here at the Hermiston Walmart for the grand finale of this event. Charlie Evans is on stage and the weigh-in is underway. Ish Monroe is first to weigh in, but his spot only produced small fish and they don't come close to taking the lead. Randy McAbee Jr.'s stringer is even smaller, under six pounds. Cody Meyer has enough to beat Neil Russell's day three mark and he takes the lead for the moment. Until the first heavyweight steps up, Ken Wick was upgrading all day long, and he makes the first serious challenge of the day with a four-day total of 44 pounds, four ounces. Next up is Cody King, a young angler with a whole lot of confidence. After three days fishing the lower river, he changed up his game plan on the final day and locked upstream where the big fish live. That gamble paid off with a huge stringer. That's what I needed. And he's got five. Cody needs 10 pound and three ounces. Five fish. They weigh in a total of 13 pounds, three ounces. Your new leader, Cody King. 
Cody King jumps from sixth place to first and sets the weight to beat at 47 pounds, five ounces. Mark Lippincott had over 10 pounds today, but he can't top Cody. And even with that beautiful five pound smallmouth, neither can Ron Mace. Ron Hobbs Jr. needed a limit today, but only was able to catch four fish and his total falls short as well. The rookie Joseph Caparuccio had a fantastic tournament, but his one sweet spot didn't produce enough today to capture the lead. So that leaves day three leader Neil Russell as the only angler left to challenge Cody King. He worked out a game plan and stuck with it. While others headed north after Big Bass, he stayed close to the marina, returning to his sweet spot time and again. Today, he landed quality fish, but will it be enough to overtake Cody King? Nice. Cody, come on down, where you can watch up close and personal. And one of these two will be our champion when we get these fish weighed in. All right, Neil, let's load them in. Neil Russell on day one, 12 pounds, four ounces. Well, four. There's something in the bag, they're alive. 12 pounds, four ounces. On day two, 10 pounds even, not quite as strong. But then yesterday, really poured it on. Five fish that weighed 14 pounds, 13 ounces, 14, 13. Give them a total of 37 pounds and one ounce, 37, one. Right now, Cody King, closer Cody, in the lead right now at 47 pounds and five ounces. 10-5 will win. Let's see it. What do you think? I think it's close. I think it's close too. Let's do it. What do you think? Let's find out. It's close, isn't it? I think it's going to be close. All right. Neil Russell has weighed in 37-1. He needs 10 pounds and five ounces. Anything less than that, Cody King will be our champion. He has five. Five fish. <laughs> Total weight. 10 pounds, nine ounces, Neil Russell is our champion. Neil Russell finally takes his turn at the front of the stage. This moment has been a long time coming. You truly are the king of Columbia River. And on behalf of the National Guard, we're happy to present you this check. Congratulations. It's the biggest payday of his career. But more than that, Neil Russell finally takes his place among the champions of the sport. He is now the 2009 Columbia River Champion. Cody King just misses the top spot by five ounces in an amazing comeback and finishes in second. Ron Mace ends up in third. Here's a look at the Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year standings. Cody Meyer takes over the lead. He had a good strategy today, but champion Neil Russell had a better one. What I fished was about nine miles from, from the launch. Downriver, I didn't have to lock. Little roadbed, the channel swings out away from it, and the roadbed's right tight to the bank with a giant flat outside of it. So the current was marginal, but enough that they could still feed there, but also spawn, they weren't in a lot of current. There we go. Um, weren't necessarily locked up on beds, but they were in there in that kind of a mood where they're pretty easy to catch when I could find them. In the morning, they're tentative, and the little swim bait would get a reaction, and I'd catch some that way. There we go. And in the afternoon, they'd eat a little tube pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. I knew I needed about 11 pounds, thereabouts. There we go. Nice. I felt like I might have 10 and a half pounds. And sure enough, I had 10 and a half pounds, had enough. <laughs> this is a victory that was years in the making. He'd come so close twice before. This week, Neil Russell put that experience to work and goes home a champion. Want fishing tips from FLW pros? Head over to FLWoutdoors.com where you'll find top videos, news updates, and live tournament coverage. And for more fishing action, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. Join us next time as the Walmart FLW Walleye Tour heads into the home stretch of the 2009 season. The pros head to Wisconsin's Lake Winnebago for the final regular season event. 
For our champion, Neil Russell and Charlie Evans, I'm Jason Harper. We'll see you next time right here on FLW Outdoors.